How you doing, YouTube family and friends? Uh, right now, I'm working on some masks, crocheted masks. Um, when people start making the fabric ones and all of that, I just didn't really find a need that I really needed to make any crochet ones until I was asked. And uh, once I was asked to make them, a uh, girlfriend wanted to partner with me and put in the linings. And we're also looking to see if we can get some filtered linings and also do that. But right now, what I'm going to do is do a tutor tutorial for those of you who are in different areas of the country, of the world, and that you are crochets like crocheters like myself. And you want to go ahead and just whip you up some also. So uh, I'm going to do a quick tutorial as quick as I can tutorial on this I uh, watched a tutorial of a lady from let's say Chinese Japan or somewhere and uh, she's very good and I'll put a link in my description uh, of this video of where I found her pattern and I just was asked to convert it into English tutorial so that's what I'm doing so please 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 uh, you uh, you can support her channel or go over to her and give her a thumbs up because she did an excellent job on the tutorial. Uh, I had actually made a um, mask myself without a pattern, just trying to write a pattern. And then I realized, you know, it's really quicker to just to go to YouTube and find someone who's already taken the time to do the tutorial or to make a pattern and duplicate that. And so then the best one that I could find was in Chinese. And so I decided, oh, okay, well then I can read lips or follow along whatever she's doing. So it should be fairly easy for me to just duplicate what she's done. But by no means do I want to slight the work that she put into it. So I will add her video uh, in, the, in my description. So let's get started. I started on this a day or two days ago, and I have about 10 of them made already. So I'm going to show you what they look like. Then I'm going to walk you through what I did, and then I'm going to do the t actual tutorial. So get ready. Get your things ready that you need, and uh, let's go. And if you need any information as far as the linings and anything like that, <clears throat> I'm not going to do that part of this, but in that video that I'm going to put in the description, she has at the end what she did to, to line that. So let's get started. Yes, for those of you who have been following me, I cut all my hair off. Yes, I did. I cut my locks out. And so I'm I'm learning to learn to loving my hair again. So uh, follow that journey. I'll see what I'm going to do next. Those of you, this is your first time coming to the channel. Look around. I have things on here for cooking, for hair, for any aspects of my life that uh, I feel like someone else could benefit from I'll be a blessing all right so let's get going let me show you what I've done so this is my little area right now through during the core COVID-19 I'm working on jewelry I'm crocheting I'm paying bills over there working on my little doggy she's sweet where is she let's see if I can find her there she is that's my baby that's Faith she's 10 weeks old she was born on January 17th, in the midst of all of this stuff that was going on in the world. And she's the love of my life right now. So, okay, let's pull out one of these. Now, this particular one, I'm making some small ones, and then I'm making some uh, medium-sized to large, and then some uh, extra large. So, uh, the I think the basic thing that I'm going to want you to know about the pattern is that there's an, an increase, a stay, and then a decrease. And uh, I want to say it's a very simple pattern for those of you who already know how to crochet. So uh, this is all done in the single crochet. Uh, the hook that I used was a G hook. In the tutorial, I think she might have used an E or F. She used to E, I think. I used to G. So you're going to have to figure out your gauge. Um, and then another thing, I started with the smaller ones. I only chain 11. With the mediums to the large ones, I chained 
13. And that extra large one over there I did. Um, not sure how many I did. Did I start with? It was a bigger hook I used, and that's why it's so much bigger. So you have to be careful. The, when you use a larger hook, your gauge goes up. So this is the larger one that I did. All right, and so we can get going. I'm also working on one right now. I'm gonna, as soon as I start the new one, I will start the tutorial and we'll jump right through that. So let's get ready and get them made up. And um, and supply the world with what we're gonna be needing for these next few months. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna use this just so, this is a counter of yarn that does my yarn. And I wanted to know about approximately how much yarn did I need for each one of my uh, masks because I'm using scrap yarn, a lot of scrap yarn I have. So I put it in this little unit and I lift it up and then what it does is it's going to give me, can you see that? When I get through with it, I'll know how much yarn it took for me in yards to use to make to make a, a mask and so and when I get into my other colors where I don't have a whole lot of uh, that appears my balls are small or whatever I can just run it through here and get the correct uh, the number that I would need to make a mask and I'll put the description the number in the description at the end of the video and it has a little plastic thing on it where it can stick on something while you're I don't know if it, it won't stick on here but I'm just gonna sit it next to me for now all right so to get started uh, <clears throat> I just leave a three inch tail and I'm gonna do this one Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm gonna do thirteen my regular. And then I work from the bottom of my um, chain. And I'm gonna after the thirteen I have to chain one because I'm gonna turn my work and go into the second stitch, the second chain, I'm sorry. So depending on, you want to have an odd number when you do yours. I have some where I'm doing 11. And then if I have some smaller ones I need to make, I'll even go down to probably nine, chain nine to start. But once you learn the pattern, you should be able to figure out how to adjust your pattern once you understand the concept of it. And this one is an increase and then a no increase for about four, five, six rows and then a decrease depending on your measurements. All right, so I'm gonna make several different ones for my stash that I'm doing. But for purposes for this tutorial, I'm going to call this one a medium to large mask with using 13 and a G hook. Now this tail I will be kind of using to help guide me also. I'll give you a couple of different pointers as I do it. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to turn and I'm going to do another row the same way without any increases. And the third row will be the row that I start my increase. Oops, I forgot I got it in this 
this little unit here, so I have to be careful. I'm doing a couple of things at one time. I'm not sure where I purchased that at. Probably just like at Michael's or somewhere. It's not something I ordered offline. So I'm always going to chain one and turn for this whole piece. Now, because I have 13 stitches here, I know that uh, on the 13th stitch on here is where I'm going to increase. I mean, uh, was on the 12th, 7th stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the seventh, I'm going to increase. An increase is I'm going to put three singles in that one stitch. That's the increase. And that will be the same increase until we get up to um, 14 rows. So I'm going to do this for 14 rows. Chain one and turn. The next row where the tail is, that is a reminder for you that there is no increase. Okay, so that should be a reminder that when you get up to the top, the middle, the third one in there, you're going to want to use a marker. I don't really have to use a marker because I can identify my stitches pretty well, but for you just doing it, we're going to use a marker, okay? So put a marker right there in that middle stitch of the three increase the row before. So <clears throat> use that tail as when you begin to know that this is the row that you do not increase. All right, and you come down. You chain one and you turn. Now going back up, whoops. Me and this might not go long. Uh, lost my train of thought. But going up, the one that doesn't have the tail going up is your increase. So the marker, this tail is telling you, whenever you're looking at it, using it as a marker or a reminder, this is to remind you not to increase. Okay, so we're up to the top, and I'm at where the marker is. So I take the marker out, and I put three singles in that stitch. Get my marker, I put my marker in the middle, in the middle, in the th middle of the three which is your second one and I keep on going and go down you hear some noise in the background I have a new puppy I showed you at the beginning she's awoke now so she's going around trying to find everything that she can to put in her mouth and I'm going to go back up I call it going up the mountain <laughs> when I get up to the marker the tail is telling me what? Not to increase. This is called increasing what I'm doing when I put three and one. So I'm now at the top. And when I put a stitch in that one, I also go back and put the marker in there so that the next row I'll know when I come back to increase. All right, so when I get down to the end of this row, I'm going to chain one and turn and go back up. And I'm going to do that until I have... 14 rows and then I'll come back I go, and how do I count my rows I count my rows like this can you see the indentations here two four six so each one of these is two four six now if I turn it on the opposite side you can't count it like that because it's going to be one then another see there so you can't count it in twos on that side but on this side, you can count it in twos, two, four, six. So when I get to 14, I'll come back. All right, I'm at 14. Get my marker. I'm going to count it out for you. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 rows. 14 rows. So I ended my 14 rows on the opposite side of my tail. All right. So I took my marker out and I'm going to take that marker and I'm going to place it here in the corner of this row, which is going to indicate to me that that's my 14th row. All right. Because now I'm going to be starting my 15th row. I'm going to chain one. And go into the first one and now I'm going to crochet until I have a total of 22 rows or eight more rows I had to count with my fingers right quick <laughs> not no increases so when I got up to the top got up to the top there I don't need a marker to tell me anything I just keep going Okay, so I keep going, I get to the end, and then I'm going to chain one and turn and go back. So I'm going to go do that until I have 22 rows. And uh, why did I put the marker there? Just so that I don't have to keep starting back from here and going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I can just go from the marker and go 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Then when I get to 22, we're going to start a decrease. I'm going to pull in one that's already done. All right. So right now I'm at this point. I'm going up and I'm at the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14th row is right here. These additional eight rows will be no increase. Then when I get to 19 and 20 rows, I'm going to start a decrease and we'll decrease all the way down until we have the 13 stitches that we began with. All right, and then I'll show you how to do the chain stitch and border it. Chain stitch, border it, and then you're done. All right. So I'll be back when I'm at row 22, no increases. So this is what your work should look like. Consistency on your edges because you're Getting to the edge, chaining one turn, and go into the very first stitch. All right, I'll be back at 22. All right, so I'm going to chain one and turn. These will be decreased every other row. So there's 25 stitches I have here. So I'm going up to number, well, before I start, I would probably have you mark the middle and your middle if you're doing 13, your middle if you're doing 11. It, remember, it should always be an odd number. I can't find my little, oh, duh. Here it is right here, my marker. Take my marker off of here and put it in the 13th one. That would represent where I have to start my decrease, okay? It means there's 12 more behind it. All right, so what I want to do is one before and one after is how I'm going to do this decrease. So when I get to my marker, the one before... I'm going to pick up a loop the one the markers in I'm going to pick up a loop and the one after the marker I'm going to pick up a loop so there I got three loops three remove my marker go through all three and put my marker in that in that one that's the one that I pulled them all together in. All right, and then continue down the rest, the other 12 with singles. And the same thing will apply <clears throat> when you uh, do the tail on this one, it will be telling you to decrease. Uh, 
let's see what's going to tell you going back. So going back, no, it's not the tail's not doing what it did going up. So on my way back, well, going, going, it told me two degrees this time. Now when I come back, I just leave the marker there and just put one of them in. You know, don't decrease, just keep going. Uh, once I get past it, I go back and I move that marker up. So when I come back, that's where my decrease is going to be at. And this will really help you out by doing this. It'll save you a lot of counting and stuff. Okay? Okay, one, two, three. <clears throat> All right, so one more time. Going to chain one. Going back. And this time when I go back, I'm going to do a decrease. So we do a decrease. And right now I'm at 32. I've used 32. How much yarn I've used right now? I'm on 32. So when I'm done, that'll tell me how many I need just to do the ones that are medium to large size, how much uh, yarn I will need. All right, so now I'm um, back here. So here's the middle. So I'm gonna pick up a loop, pick up a loop, pick up a loop. So I pick up a loop before, in the marker, and after the marker. The stitch after the marker, I pick up a loop. And because I have this weird marker, I'm gonna move the marker. <laughs> Put it in my mouth. And then drop off all four. Tighten it. Then I go back and I put I put uh, the marker right there in that stitch. All right. And then I continue down. All right. Now I'm gonna do that until I get down every other one until I have thirteen. A row of 13. When I have a row of 13, I will do two more rows and then we'll we'll start to, to do the uh, earpiece. All right. And it'll make it a total of 36. When you get to 36 rows, you should be. But when you get to um, only 13, uh, 13 stitches, because that's what we started with was 13 stitches. We want to end with 13 stitches. When we get down to 13 stitches, you do two more rows, and that will give you 36 rows total. Okay? So I'm not going to keep you on film with this because we're already I'm trying to make the video not too long. All right. So what I did was I went up 14, and then I went up 22. I didn't do anything. And then 14 down, which will make a total of 36 rows. All right, but right now we're concentrating on decreasing every other row until we get to 13 stitches left. I'll come back uh, with the two after the 13 stitches, and I'll do two more rows, which make it 36 rows, and then I'll be ready to start the chain stitch for the earpiece. Okay? I decided to, <clears throat> decided to come in a little earlier, so in case any of you my counts were off. Uh, I just took my marker out. I'm on the tail side and I'm at 33 rows. I'm going to count from this side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 33. So when I got finished doing going back, make it 33 and then I'm going to do three more rows so that I'll have, I'll end with 36. 
Now, all of this can be adjusted depending on if you're making it for a smaller person, a bigger person. These are just my counts for starting off with 13. The ones I did for 11, I ended with 34 rows because I wanted to make it shorter. So you can adjust this how you see fit. I'm just giving you a pattern that you can work with and design with and uh, customize it to the size that you need to. Now that you understand how to increase and then stop increasing for five, six, seven rows, you can even shorten those amount of rows in the middle. You know, instead of doing the eight rows I did in the middle that I didn't increase at all, but that helps give it that little pouch around the, the nose part that gives that, that little pouch right there. So, but now that you know the pattern, you're going to do good. So I think I just did 4, 6, 8, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24, 26, 28, 2, 34, 35. I got one more. Got one more to do. Oh, what count was off? Yeah, I got one more. 36. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alrighty. And I'm at 44. Get ready for the 45. 46. Alright. Let's see how much I use. That's great to, I can really use up and make any colors. You can also use cotton yarn. <clears throat> Works really well. So th th these are some cottons. I did make one or two in cotton yarn. Let me see. This one here. It's cotton. So I can't know if you can tell. But I made this one with cotton. Cotton absorbs more when you're washing and stuff. Cotton is good when you make swimsuits and stuff like that. Acrylic when you're making outside other articles. But this is going to be lined, remember? So I can choose different types of yarn with this. All right, so now I'm at the end of the last row, which was 36. Don't cut any yarn or anything. You start with one, you end with one. So I'm going to go right from here and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to go all the way along this border this with a single crochet and what I'm actually picking up is I go I try to put a single crochet in each row to be consistent all right so I just go into that make sure you are getting down into the stitch I don't know I can show you this way. I don't have the camera over my head. If I could position this with the camera over my head, you would see better. But everybody that's doing this right now knows how to crochet. This is not a teaching <laughs> how to crochet. This is just giving you a pattern, a visual pattern. Okay, see that? See how that looks? I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to keep you in frame since we've been together all this time now. It's probably going to end up being a 30 minute, 30 minute video, but it'll be so worth it. I've, I'm making five or six a day. I could probably make about ten a day, but I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Today I'm actually getting ready to get outside and try to go skate on my boulevard. And if I get to do that, I'll maybe do a video of it. My baby's not going to be able to go with me yet. She's not old enough, so I'll go all the way to that corner. Pick up that last corner one. It's normally a small, small stitch, but I still always make sure I get two, two threads. Then I tighten it. Now, with this particular one, with this needle, I'm doing um, 20. 20 
20 change, chains. I was doing 23, but I felt like it was too loose. All right, so there's 20. So then I take it, I jump over to where my tail is at, and I go right in there and I do a single. <clears throat> and then I just lay this right across the top. You can also, if you want, before you crochet, you can kind of filter it in yourself if you like, go back and forth. I might do the first one or two that way. And then I just lay it across my work and uh, crochet it right in. That's probably what's best going to work for me. I don't want to have any tails or anything hanging out. Some people like to use a darning needle and, and weave all their edges in. Whatever floats your boat. All right. Put here. Oops. Need a little bit more yarn. Now at this point, I'm not going to pull too much out because I, I want to exactly see how much yarn did I use. I am going to make one out of thread also. I love working with thread. So I'm going to get some thread that I have in there and probably put two threads together and make me... Uh, the count will be a little different because of the weight of the thread. I might have to do a few more rows. Smaller hook size. That's going to be beautiful. All right, I'm coming to the end. And it just looks really nice. This single crochet, back and forth stitch. You, you turn around. Turn your work around and go the other way. It gives it this pattern. You could do a back loop pattern if you like. Uh, you can get really fancy with that. So I'm at the end again. Now I'm going to do 20. Come right back over into that corner. Push it through there, and then I just do a slip stitch. Oops, I just do a slip stitch in this one since it's the end. Pull it, pull it through because I don't want any height. Then <clears throat> I cut two to three inches, pull the knot. Pull it all the way through. Knot it really good. Me, I go across the top once or twice because I don't want it popping in. And then I go on the inside. This is where you can take it. Well, it's kind of small to take a darning needle left. So I just filter it in on the inside because remember, this is going to be lined. So you should there won't be an issue with it backing out. I just ordered some um, filters, so I'm going to be making some, probably with a little sleeve to put some filters in on another set. Those are going to be a little bit more costly, but my understanding is you'll be able to use them more, four or five times. So that's what I do is just filter that piece in, pull in. I just never want my work to back out, so I take my time. And then sometimes I'm going to go ahead and show you what I do. But that's just me. I just take a little glue. And I rub it on the end, just a little bit. Fabric glue, whatever you got. 
Mine just happens to be craft binding tacky glue. Had it for a long time. And <clears throat> run it back through the other way. Pull it, cut it. And there is your mask. Let me put it on for you. very comfortable fashionable enough thank you for watching share comment subscribe it's not too tight this is 19 20 20 tanks so thumbs up comment subscribe share and as always, be blessed because you are blessed by the best.